You're on mile facing. If you're coming out of the hold, I need a mile facing. Otherwise, we're going to have to start breaking you guys off and sending you back to the lake. No side by side, no on top. I got a little in a half mile south of this. We're off your way. Low in half mile south of this. Good. I need you to maintain that speed or slower. Actually, pull it back for me. You're eating up for that Cessna just a little bit. Pull it back just a little bit. Follow the railroad track going. Jackson County, that uh, can't see us. We're going to go around. Put the right down for 27. Breaking any of you guys out. We want you guys to get to the show. Find somebody to follow. Find somebody to follow. We're on the fence in there. Lower the bucking fence, rock the wind. We've got a half off our fence with the gear still up. Your gear still up. You're lowering and you're. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Welcome to Oshkosh. Beautiful. That's what we want to see. Go straight up the track. Welcome back to our eighth and final part of our Flying to Oshkosh series. We spent two nights camping at Oshkosh, and now that we're here, I kind of wish we planned to stay longer. But that's going to have to wait for next year. It's time to leave, and that brings us to Oshkosh's final challenge. How do we get out of this beehive? It's actually much easier than I thought, and a lot easier than the arrival. The first step is attending a departure briefing held basically continuously in the morning over by the general store and registration. Here, you are given an extra copy of the notum in case yours was lost in some terrible camping accident. All right, we're going to go to the, um, to the departure, this picture. Guys the departure is very straightforward, one. but if you mess up, you mess up yeah, big. Yeah. So I'll go over the basics once we get our airplane out of the mud with the help of the amazing Air Venture Marshals. Yeah. Board. Back. Board. Nice. He was stuck. <laughs> Pulling your aircraft out and placing a VFR sign in your window indicates to the marshals that you're ready to taxi. Before you start your engine, you need to have done all your pilot stuff like check the weather and have listened to the automated information. If there's no automated information, the airport is closed. Start your engine and the marshals will guide you to the active runway. All right, clear front. Our aircraft with a departure reservation, contact clearance delivery. Sounds like RV, 36 left, click for takeoff. Remember, you don't call anyone. Just monitor the runway frequency listed in the NOTAM. They also have signs with the frequency every so often. So, the departure. Just like when we landed, there are four potential runways we'll be departing from, so it's good to be familiar with all of them, and they're all summarized nicely in the NOTAM. Pretty much each runway has a range of departure headings that you must hold, and an altitude restriction. Remember when we arrived, we had to stay at 1,800 feet? Well, we want to avoid that arriving traffic pattern, so we need to stay below them, and you must stay below 1,300 feet until you're clear of the airspace, or things might get interesting for you. Also, we want to avoid all that Fisk arrival traffic, so the departure headings need to be followed and you especially must avoid the southwest area of the airspace. Runway 27 and 9 are the easy ones. In both instances, you fly runway heading. When departing 27, you have the freedom to depart runway heading of 270 or jog right to a heading of 360 if you need. Runway 9 is the same thing, you just need to stay a little tighter, between 040 and runway heading of 090. A lot of pilots in their garage built flying contraptions may be a little freaked out about flying over water low. So you'll notice there's no altitude restriction on this departure, so you can get high in case of emergency. Runway 18 right is easy. Mind the altitude restriction and fly runway heading until you are clear. You gotta maintain that 180 heading though, no wiggle room. Runway 18 left is similar, but since you don't want to be touching wings with the 18 right departures, you must fly a slightly left heading of 150 but don't drift too far left because that's where my favorite departure is, 3-6 left. The 3-6 left departure is interesting because the departure end of the runway is pointed straight at the other runway, taking off its own traffic. We must avoid that, so we have to turn before the control tower to avoid that traffic. We also need to avoid the seaplane base to the south, so we must take off, make a quick turn to the 150 heading and stay below 1,300 feet and try not to touch wings with anyone. 
Thankfully for the added drama of this video, we got the 3-6 left departure. And before anyone calls the FAA because we're too close to the other traffic, it's worth noting a special waiver for Oshkosh has been issued, reducing the legal separation requirements so us pilots can stare into the whites of each other's eyes on departure. Let me listen to that ATIS real quick. Ready to place in the windshield before taxi. Oshkosh departure information, Quebec 1353 Zulu, wind 2404, visibility 10. Sky clear, temperature 240.18, altimeter 3017. Runway 27, runway 36 left in use. VFR departures follow the direction of the EAA flagman to the departure runway. Do not call ground control for taxi. VFR aircraft departing runway 27, monitor FAA controllers on frequency 128.75 for departure instructions. VFR aircraft departing runway 36 left, monitor FAA controllers on frequency 118.9 for departure instructions. VFR aircraft with a departure res... Alright, I'm gonna think I'm on 118.9. I got lost my engine here. Rolling. Lost his engine. Are you able to exit the runway? Everybody hold short of 36 left. My RV lost the engine. Are you clear of the runway? Negative. All right, everybody, uh, just hold your position now. The red RV will just hold there, and the white RV stay in tension. Uh, okay, can I text back? Are you running again? Yeah, I'll do Wait. that. No. Do you want to take off or do you want to just oh, take no, the parking? Oh, no, it's his. Take it back to the end of the runway. And... Is this guy lost okay, his engine? Okay, wait RV, uh, tail dragger, you can power up, make a left turn onto the runway, and then uh, just line up and wait on the purple dot there ahead and to your right. Let me know when you're ready. All right, so we're going to be taking off to the north, and we have to turn before the control tower to heading 150, so, so, so I can take off in an immediate right turn. Well, and we can't, go over the, we can't go over the seaplane base either. So we can't go over the coast. So we have to get up to, um, we can't go above 1300 until we're out of the Delta. In case you are curious, the pilot who lost his engine on his takeoff roll taxied back and went to maintenance. Airport operations went almost completely uninterrupted. Normally, I try to edit these videos down to keep the pace moving. However, considering the whole purpose of this video is to show the departure and it happened so fast, this entire taxi up, take off, and turn is all in real time. You'll see there isn't much time between being told to line up and wait and getting the takeoff clearance while the plane in front of us is just barely wheels off the ground. I'll point out the control tower. We have to turn right prior to it. Thank you, second RV. The one on the purple dot now, clear for takeoff. Four Juliet Mike, with runway 36 left, line up and wait. Three Juliet Mike, runway 36 left, clear for takeoff. All departures turn right 150 prior to the control tower, maintain 1,300 below until exiting the class delta. Thanks for coming to the show this year. Nice job, second RV. Sorry about the confusion there, but nice job. Traffic, traffic. Wow, interesting. All departures, nice job this morning. 150 until exiting class Delta, 1,300. East Coast and the wow. newest inbounds from the uh, southeast and the southwest. Cubs just pull up to the whole sh uh, the yellow shirt and hold short. Just keep traffic, traffic. traffic. To the uh, monitor sign. Cubs just pull up to that the pink shirt and hold short. There's uh, launching traffic downfield. A lot of birds out there. Yeah. Unfortunately, the GoPros can only really capture other airplane traffic when they're extremely close. Using my ADS-B, this is roughly what we were seeing in terms of departing traffic. Cut, three, six left, line up and wait. Cub, three, six left, line up and wait. Cub, line up and wait. Oh, my noise canceling wasn't on that whole time. Cub at three, six, line up and wait, please. See him. So this guy's here, that guy's over there. And I think they're both coming this way, so. 
This one, I'm, I'm following this guy, yeah. Oh, so, well, this guy's far, so. Downfield. Crazy how many people come in flying in formation. It's awesome. Yeah, did you see him? Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's another one over there, but he's kind of far. Is this the guy you're Cub, following? Yeah. Off. Runway 36 left. Cub, clear for takeoff. Traffic. Traffic. All runway 36 departures turn right heading 150 prior to the control tower. Maintain 1,300 or below until exiting the class delta. Thanks for coming to the show again this year. Tricycle, just pull up to the pink shirt and hold short. Need to break away from this crew. Crewman, uh, red Cessna, runway 36 left, clear for takeoff. Use caution for the slow cub off the departure end. Cessna, it's 36 left, clear for takeoff. Cessna, clear for takeoff. And departing Cessna, use ca uh, caution for the cub. He's off the departure. He's going to be a lot slower than you. Traffic. Traffic. Little formation flying with this guy? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, 1-4 Whisker without delay, 3-6 left, clear for takeoff. 1-4 Whisker without delay, clear for takeoff. Hilane. Go Hilane. around the corner there, 1-4 Whisker. <laughs> Shut oh. up. All departures to rating 1-5-0 prior to the control tower. Maintain 1,300 below until exiting the class. Oh, good smile that guy. Traffic. Traffic. Nine two Romeo, just tighten your right. if you will pull right up behind that Amphib. 9-2 Romeo, V-tail, just pull it up behind that amphib. Uh, tighten the line up a little bit, please. All right. We did it. You did it. We made it out. <laughs> that was, yeah, that was, that wasn't as intense as the, um, as the arrival, but that was just chaos. That was just a flock of airplanes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you have to watch out, too. Yeah. We did Oshkosh, in and out. <laughs> Thank you, Romeo. Awesome. Turn right, 150. That was very cool. That was very cool. So now, all right. So, how do you feel? Good. Awesome. I feel really good. That was an amazing experience. <laughs> that was super fun. Just everything about it, camping. Yeah. The actual the air sh day air show, night air show, all the vendors. Everybody was super nice, super friendly. Yeah. Um, just camping out. The weather. It was a little hot, but you know, it's summer. I mean, you know, it was, there was yeah. a lot of places to cool down. There's drinks, food everywhere. Um, traffic, traffic. That night I was very comfortable. It, was, it dropped down to the sixties maybe. Where's that traffic? Oh, here you go, I got him. As long as you go, some lightweight clothes, sunscreen, hat. Yeah. Oh, what was lifesaver for me was, I, just, I took an umbrella, a little yeah. Mary Poppins umbrella. <laughs> gave myself some shade the whole time just for the, the actual departure so again it was something i've never done before and so that's uh, but it was pretty straightforward for as chaotic as it was that was pretty legit that was fun i just can't get over how many planes were landing and departing at this at a time <laughs> insane when there wasn't an air show go i mean there's always multiple planes in the sky i don't know how they do air traffic control that's it's yeah. it's insane to me um Overall, the show, I, I may disappoint some people, but like I was telling you, I'm not, I love flying, I love flying my plane, but I've never been like the, like, I love every plane, I want to like look in under the cowling, and I want to like, like smell the exhaust, and like, I'm just not, I'm into planes, but I'm not like, oh, that's a 1973 limited edition, I, 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 I love my plane, I love us flying, but I appreciate other planes, but I, I was like, ah, an air show that's all about that kind of stuff, maybe I won't even like it. That's, I wasn't sure how I would feel. But even me, who has that kind of feeling, I loved it. I, oh, it was amazing. Uh, I thought it was, in, in the in the amenities were out of control. Yes. Like, we, you know, we showed in the other video, I mean, earlier in the video, but restrooms everywhere, drinkable water everywhere. They have, like, little convenience stores all through, like, right next to the campsites. Um, they had like the shaving and like washing your hand station. You could blow dry your hair. They had the showers. And for the uh, ladies, I did spot a few girls with 
hair dryers and even flat irons. So yeah, <laughs> if you want to look nice, uh, don't. I mean, you can. They have out. I mean, that you have to bring your own, but there's outlets. Yeah. I mean, there. Like you said, there's people. There was like little vanities set up for all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's so, amazing. Yeah, I wasn't expecting all that. Yeah, no, it was really cool. And then. And then all the, anything you think, if you have kids, they have a, like a daycare. If you yeah. need your scooters to scooter around, they have scooter oh, rentals. Oh, they have scooters, wheelchairs, um, wagons for kids that people yeah. pull around. Oh, there was an, uh, what was the uh, emergency? Oh, there's a, oh, there was, so there's, well, you reminded me, there's a medical tent, obviously. Right. But, and then there's also a little area for emergency repairs. Right. So. We were terrified of my propeller hitting the ground. So oh my glad. gosh, there was like this much off the ground. But I mean, that would have been a much bigger repair, but I guess if you have like a flat tire or something or your engine's running rough, they have a whole like maintenance area just for right. that, which is crazy. And remember to bring your your tug, your yeah. tug, your... Um, well, every pilot brings their tow bar everywhere. Except oh, your for, tow bar, that's what I mean. Ex except for me. Um, I tend, I just, uh, we well, have That's a good reminder. I mean, you're thinking about bringing so much, so much stuff that you need and, you know, it's easy to forget. So we bought a new tow, uh, tow bar. <laughs> Which worked out because you like it better. I, so. like, I like it a lot better. Well, my, the one that comes in my plane is like a little kind of dinky one that I think is meant for like, like if you need it at like an FBO to like pull up for fuel or something. It's not really good for like towing through the grass. Uh, this one looks a lot more rugged, so that's nice. Fenders, amenities, everything was amazing, but someone had mentioned to us something very important and I think it's what people enjoy the most, which is the community. I feel yeah. like where we live, well, we just started flying. We're still kind of like little babies as far as <laughs> exactly. experience and getting out there. Um, but I feel like there's a lot of like little aviation families and they mostly, you know, like to go out just to get together share that experience, yeah. camp out together. Uh, so yeah, a big part of it is community and you find like your little, like I said, aviation family, yeah. which is which is really cool. Yeah, so. no, it's awesome. So now we're headed, we're headed home. We're gonna, we don't have enough fuel, so we have to, I'm kind of entering, entering a complicated airspace here, so uh, I have to be able to focus. But um, we're, we, we took off with a little bit of fuel, uh, so I have to stop. We're gonna get some breakfast and we're gonna head back. We're actually gonna stop by Charleston, but I don't think we're gonna film that. I think this is the end, the end of the road trip. Uh, we're going back. Yeah. Sound good? Sounds great. Yay. Thanks for watching. I wanted to take a moment at the end of this final Flying to Oshkosh video to thank everyone who flew along with us through all eight parts of this series. It took an unreasonable amount of time and energy to make all these videos. But seeing the channel grow is really amazing and it's what's encouraging us to keep making these videos. If you're still watching, I don't need to remind you to subscribe and all that stuff, but every like and comment you all give is really appreciated. If you know anyone who'd be into our content, be sure to shoot them a link or post these videos on your social media of choice. We love seeing the 7.0 family grow. Thanks again and we'll see you next time.